Welcome back to another Post Media Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriott, pleased to be joined by Senators goalie coach Pierre Gru, and uh, we're going to have a quick discussion about all the goalies in the organization. There's no question, Pierre, you have a lot of them to work with, but let's start with the acquisition of, of uh, Matt Murray from the Pittsburgh Penguins in a deal at the draft. I, I heard you say earlier this month that that was an opportunity you just couldn't pass up on. Yeah, I mean, as a staff, we met and we just, you always discuss how you can better your team. And uh, when Matt's name came up, uh, obviously we look at all the goalies that are going to become available um, when needed. But when Matt's came, name came up, I go back and remember in 2017 when, um, you know, he beat us uh, in the semifinals, he was outstanding. As soon as he came in the series, uh, you know, it was almost him and Craig went head to head, but he made – the key saves for them to win. So he's had a couple off years, um, especially last year, but there's so much upside in his game at 26 years old. There's so much uh, things he does well, and he's got such good details in his game that um, to me, it was watch, after watching video and talking to uh, Pierre and, and DJ, it was a guy that we couldn't pass up because a two time Stanley Cup champion, whenever you get a chance to get somebody that's won, you jump at it. And somebody that's won and he's only 26 years old, that can teach our young guys what it takes to get there. I mean, he's 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 been surrounded with great guys like Crosby, Malkin, Latang, and Fleury uh, at, at the start. So to me, it was imperative to um, to get a guy like that that can pr help our guys uh, know how to get there and help our, our young goalies too in camp when they when they get to meet him. And one of the things that that has really struck me about him, and I know he signed the contract extension, but he's really excited to be here. And, and it seems to me like he's really excited for a fresh start. Absolutely. And that's one thing I thought when I was looking at him, I thought a change of scenery would do him great. And after uh, I had a meeting with him, um, one thing that came out and I, I told, you know, obviously Pierre and DJ this is that he wants this team to do well. He wants to prove what type of goal he is and how we can help this team get to the next level. He knows personally He's got to he's got to have a bounce back here. He's got to get back to where his level of play should be. But the excitement and the motivation that he has to play better and to help this team get to the next level and to get his game back where it should be. And after talking to him and after watching video on him again and watching and talking to him uh, at his summer goalie coach, and I can't wait to get on the ice with him and I can't wait to see him play games because the motivation, the competitive factor, and just just the the way he's acting about he's in, in near Muskoka so he's three and a half hours away so he loves it that he's so close to his off-season home and he he just loves what the team has and it's you know as the outlook for the future he's he's looking forward to that but first and foremost he he knows that he gets his game back to where it should be he's going to lead this team to more victories well and the, the other thing I was going to say is how much of it is about stability and net because one thing you and I could both understand is that Craig Anderson brought a lot of stability to this net for 10 years. This, 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 this might be a seamless transition is maybe the best way to put it. Actually, Craig had a fantastic 10 years. When you look back at, at his tenure in Ottawa, he solidified the net. Uh, you can talk about all the good goalies that came through Ottawa, but Otto, Craig is the one that solidified the position in Ottawa. Um, when you, when you go from Craig, who, to all accounts, he he knew that his game was was coming to an end with Ottawa, but now we get a 26 year old that's going to help all the other young goalies that we have in the system. It's a you're absolutely right. It's it is a seamless transition because it's going to help us get to them. So, at 26 years old, he signed a four year contract. You know, he, he's still very young, and I still feel that he his game has not even reached the prime of where it needs to be. So to me, we're going to have a goalie in the next couple of years when, you know, when we're going to be at our peak, he's going to be at his peak. So the transitions will be seamless and it puts everybody in place of where they're supposed to be and yeah. where they're supposed to develop. You know, and, 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 you know, I think we could move on next to Marcus Holberg because we anticipate that he will be the, the, the backup this year. Where do you sort of see him this season? He, he, he obviously got, way more NHL playing time last season, pardon me, than perhaps you expected. And that's because of injuries. 
Yeah, and at the start of last year, I expected you always sort of throw around how many games each goalie will play. And I I wanted to see Hoggy play maybe about eight games last year to see how he would fit in and how where his, his future was going to be. Well, I ended up Hoggy played 24 games. And early on, he was letting more goals than I would have liked, but he was getting us a chance to get into an overtime game or a shootout game. So we were getting points almost every game he was playing. So um, the development that Hoggy has, has provided is is so great because, let's be honest, he didn't have a great start in Belleville at the uh, start of last year. He didn't start very well. So when, we, when he came up to Ottawa, there was still a lot of work to do in his game, but every game he played, he got better and better and better. And the, the great thing about Hoggy is the way he wants to get better. After a game, we'll, we'll sit down him and I and do video and say, you know what, we got to work on this. We got to eliminate this from your game because you did this. And there's a great clip. I, I always remember this. Claude Giroux was on a, a shootout and Hoggy had him the whole way and then went paddle down the last second and gave the far side blocker to Claude. If you give Claude Giroux that spot, he's going to take it. So we talked about that clip. And next game, he gets a breakaway, gets the same angle, doesn't do that play, and makes the save. And then we laughed in the video because he said, you see, I listen. And I'm like, yeah, I, I know you listen. But the way he basically comprehends and the way he basically understands what he needs to work on, so little by little, every day we're working on how to get better, and he got his game better to, to great levels. So I'm really excited to see where his development comes this year. He's been working out. You know, I talked to his uh, Swedish goalie coach in the summer. We work on the things he needs to work on. One thing is, you know, he's got to be better on the PK because, he's, you know, he's got to get better reads. So he's worked at that. Um, again, he's a guy that I think is going to benefit from from Matt to, to get a guy that's, that's been there. But he's a guy that the guys love playing for him in front of him. And he's a guy that guys will compete in front of him because he competes for every puck in game or practices. Well, injury created opportunity for for Marcus Holberg, and obviously, uh, the injury to to Anders Nielsen uh, in the end ended up ending his season. What's what's his status at this juncture? Right now, it's it's still a status quo. He he has on day good days and bad days. Um, I think he, it's still headache related. Uh, it's still neck and and neck and eyes related. So I think we're we're going to wait to see him in Ottawa and and you know see how he is. I think when he got hurt December 16th last year, we're almost a year to the day. Uh, he was playing outstanding hockey, little not as consistent as we wanted to be, but he was there. So it's disappointing because because Nilly's such a great guy. You don't want to see that happen, but it's it's an injury that I mean we want to think of the health first. You know, yeah. uh, he's got to be healthy first bef before he can play hockey, and uh, we'll see once he comes into Ottawa, but. I talked to him last week, and it's the same same thing where it's his eyes or or his neck. You know, Pierre Dorian told me that he, it's a situation, Pierre, where you have to get him into Ottawa to get a look at him. But I do think you're fortunate that number one, you got Matt Murray, but but you've also got lots of goalies in the organization. And let let's move on to those guys. Let's let's talk a little bit about Joey Decord, who was signed to the three year extension this summer. Certainly showed a an awful lot of promise in uh, in Belleville last year. And, Absolutely. And, and then the UCHL, pardon me, sir, but that. Yeah, you know what? One of the best things, and then when we talked about this earlier, is when you want we bring a player, but for me, my 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 position, when we bring in a goalie, we want to develop him at the right rate. So first thing we have said to Joe is that you're going to spend some time in East Coast Hockey League to develop. As much as as well as you did with Arizona State and you brought him that, that, that um, program to the next level, we want to see how he develop in pro hockey. So he spent two and a half months in, in Brampton, which probably did him wonders good. Like he did, he, it brought him so much to his game because it's a lot of broken plays in East Coast Hockey League. It's it's three and three nights. So it's it's really tough for the goalies. But he, he managed, I hope in those games, how to basically live as a professional, to learn what it takes to take care of your body on and off the ice. So he learned those things before he went to Belleville. Once we brought Hoggy up and then he went to Belleville, he basically took that number one job from, from Gustafson. So he played incredibly well in Belleville. And, um, you know, he got rewarded for a contract a couple of weeks ago. Well, well, uh, well deserved, but he's got to prove again. He's got to take that next step again this year coming up whenever we play. But I think Joey has taken steps every year 
to show what type of, of goaltender he is and um, what, what he can do in that. You know, one of the guys that he's going to battle with in Belleville, obviously this year for playing time, whenever the AHL season gets underway, is Philip Gustafson. And Gus is playing where overseas right now? He's in... And he's in Sweden in, the, in Sordertelli, the second division. Yeah, second, and, and how has that been going for him? He's he's doing extremely well. Like I get um, I get videos from his games and I watch, and he's playing with a lot of confidence. He's on top of his crease, especially with the big ice. It's different over there, but he's playing with a lot more confidence, and he's playing with a guy that you know he knows he has something to prove. He knows he has to have a good year. So we're in a situation where. We have two guys, Joey's that's coming off a great year last year, but a great half year in, in American League. He knows he needs to be better. And Gustafson, he knows that he hasn't really developed at the rate we thought he would. But he's right now, he's played 14 games in the Swedish uh, second division. So right now, it's great for him to be playing, to gain confidence and to play more confidence than that because Gus is totally different than, than Joey because Gus is more reserved. He's calmer in his net. He's calmer in his attitude. So when Gus struggles, you can almost see him shrink down and just become, try to escape the room. Whereas when you don't know when Joey struggles because Joey is so confident. <laughs> with, with, with Gus, it's just a matter of just bringing that confidence out and making him bigger in the net and exuding that confidence out of him with this calm play. But he's, he's doing such a great job right now playing, and that's going to probably benefit him in the long run coming ahead. Before we close out here, let's talk about the – the prospects in the organization. Kevin Mandelis, uh signed your contract. Would you anticipate him starting the year in the ECHL? Is that kind of the plan? or? Yeah, right now we're in limbo because we don't know what's going to happen with, yeah. with every league. But in a normal year, he would definitely start in the East Coast. And, and just like Joey did, um, you know, play a good two months in the East Coast Hockey League and then come up, you know, play some games in Belleville if, if need be. But what Kevin Mandelays has done, he, he was the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League goalie of the year last year, and he's taken big steps. Kevin is obviously a bigger goaltender than, than the others. Um, he take, he's a big presence. He's got great lateral mobility, and he's done a great job of leading Cape Breton. And uh, Jake Grimes from Cape Breton and Scream Eagles last year was hoping that they could play playoffs because they believed with him in the net they could win the whole thing. So it was disappointing to not see Kevin being able to get there, but he's done a great job of maturing and developing his game every year. And again, he's a guy that's going to step into pro hockey. Wherever it is right now, we're, we're still in the limbo waiting. The, the, as we speak today, uh, uh, one of your goalies did return to play, and that's Mad Sogard, who is scheduled to be in Madison Hat this year, right? And, and yeah. uh, right now he's signed in Denmark, and you obviously think that's a good thing. I, you know what? I, to me, it's he needs all goalies. Well, all players need to play. But to me, the fact that he got a chance to sign with the team and, and start playing, and then figure out what's going to happen because I, I know there's some, you know, with with COVID and everything, there's uncertainty and everything in all um, levels of hockey. So the fact that he found a team and is able to practice and play is outstanding because now he's going to work at his game. What Mads has been doing is, and one big focus was his off ice. He needed to get stronger and get more stable in his stance, and he's done that. He's worked at that, and he feels great when he's on the ice as far as holding his edges and being stronger in his edges. So he's done that. Now that next step right now is finding a team to play, and he's finally found one, and he's able to go play. So that's a big step for him. And he had a rough start to last year. After you know, after he got drafted, I think he, he just sat back a bit, but then he picked up his game. And Willie Darjardin was, you know, was very complimentary of what Mads did. Um, but again, he's a guy that, you know, would go back to junior. Um, and he knew, you know, after the season last year when we talked way back in April, um, he'd go back to junior and try to have, you know, be the best goalie in the, in the league, just like Kevin Mandelay's did. So uh, we're looking for, for big things out of his last year of junior and see what, what, uh, what comes out of it. You know, the, the the last goalie we need to talk about before we let you go here today is is Levy Marilinen and uh, the Finnish goalie that you took, I think, in the third round this year. Um, what did your scouts like about him and what did you like about from him having done some homework on him on film? Like every year, um, you know, I get a list from our head scout, Trent Mann, of goalies to watch. And then I, I give my reports. I meet with the scouts 
uh, before the draft to talk about all the goalies. And Miko Rutu, uh, our European scout, brought his name up uh, late. And um, I ended up watching limited – there was limited viewings on him, but the video I ended up watching, it reminded me a lot of Marcus Holberg. Just plays a nice lateral play, has – he has the finish type gloves where he snaps at pucks and um, the way he reads the game is real well. So what I liked about him is that there was really good details, good post work, good size. He's not a big guy like we have, like we have those six, six and six, seven guys. He's a small, like he's six, two, he's not small, but he plays big in his net and he's got a good presence. And the read, the way he reads the game and the way his lateral mobility, just like Hogberg, he, he's got a great lateral mobility. So to me, he was a guy that, you know what, he's got a lot of great tools and he's got a really good upside. So I, I credit Miko Rutu to bring him up. And then uh, just before the draft, the day before the draft, we ended up talking about all, all the goalies. And we all, all uh, Miku and Anders uh, Hosberg, we all really, and of, of course Trent, but we all really liked what Marilainen was bringing to his games. And we felt that even if he had limited games, at the, at the age he was, the more games he got, the better he would develop. And I think uh, we're really happy with where, you know, even though we, we didn't have a fourth round pick, so it was either third or fifth, and the, the scouts thought, well, you know what, might as well pick him in the third round. I think it was a great pick. He's, he's one of those projects that if he develops, at what which we think he is going to develop, is going to end up being a really good pick. Well, Pierre, we really appreciate your time today. And uh, thanks very much for doing this. And we hope to see you back in the Canadian Tire Center sooner rather than later. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Bruce. It was a pleasure.